seven ways to find your purpose in life. A lot of us are lost souls. Don't you agree, China? I do. I do. Sometimes I feel very lost. I think you're lost more than anything, man. Even if you had a GPS map in front of you, you still get lost going out of the driveway. That's how lost mm, she is. There's a high possibility to that. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, another thing I think that's lost and I've been looking at it all day. What's that? Country music. Yeah, that's definitely lost. It I think like it's it coming back, though, ain't it? Yeah. There's a lot of these uh, so-called country stars moving to the pop line. I never understood why they were in country in the first place. Yeah, I, I, I whatever happened to, like, the Oak Ridge Boys and the Statler Brothers and Alan Jackson. And See, now you're getting good now. Alan Jackson, <laughs> George Strait. George Strait. Uh, Oak Ridge Boys, man. You're talking like you're old at that point. Kenny Rogers was good. Yeah, Kenny Rogers was good, but I don't really consider him But I don't him consider hardcore. him country, Yeah, though. I don't, and neither do I with the Oak Ridge Boys. Yeah, well, I grew up on the Statler Brothers and the Oak Ridge Boys. You okay. got to say the 90s country was the best. Lee Greenwood. He only had one song. No, he had a whole album, but, you know, only one song was one really song recognized. One song that was actually good. <laughs> you had to tell China that I was not up on her music. Oh, Lord. Are you were raised on different music than I was. Sorry. Yeah, but you're into all that pop and dance and all that stupid stuff. How is it stupid? 91 Z O K. I don't listen to that. You're like 50 years old still listening to the shit that we were listening to in high well, school. Well, in Chicago, it was B96. Yeah, B96. <laughs> man. Oh, my goodness gracious. You know, but I like a good old rock and, you know, I do like old country and stuff. But I was just looking at that and seeing how everything has changed. No, it definitely has. But they're saying that younger stars are now bringing it back to where it was. Believe it when I hear it. Do you listen to a lot to the country anymore? Not really. <laughs> no. Who was that one that no. you've seen in concert over here? Oh, Carrie Underwood. Yeah, Carrie is awesome. Carrie Underwood's very good. Her sh her concerts are freaking amazing. Yeah, they are. They, thank you, Hollywood, for those tickets, by the way. Yeah, thank you, Hollywood. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness for gracious. For our, our daughter and I to go many years ago. Why do you think people need a purpose in their life? They need, uh, they need a reason to be here. They need to, you know, figure out what they want to do with their lives and... It's hard sometimes. And sometimes it is hard because so much can be going wrong that you can't figure out what is the purpose of what's going on and how do I get out of this? I think complete boredom comes from that. Oh, well, yeah. There's a lot of that going around. A lot of boredom. I've been bored lately. Yeah, every night I get a text from you. I'm bored. No, I'm <laughs> fucking bored. <laughs> let, me, let me reiterate that. <laughs> every night you have. I have. You know, I'd get done with all the work I have to get done. And next thing you know, it's like, now what do I do? Sometimes you get stuck in a rut. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm in that rut. Why are you in that rut? I have no idea. Uh, creativity, I, I'm just in a rut. You know, there's some new stuff that I want to try out and stuff, but you've gotten into a rut before. Oh, yes. Many of times. That's why a lot of times when I've had my own show, it just ends up ending. <laughs> because I don't know where to go with it next. You cover the main basis of it, and you're just like, okay, now what? You know? Well, it's easier when you're bouncing stuff off each other. It's ten times easier when there's you and one other person. When you're by yourself, it's like, yeah, you're talking to the camera, and you're pretty much talking to your audience, but you're not getting feedback. And that's what's hard about doing this kind of stuff, live podcast. Mm -hmm. It's real hard. I mean, it's like... If if we if I was sitting here and I was watching the chat the whole entire time, I mean, I could probably get something going, but at the same time, there's a possibility it would flop. And a lot of podcasts do flop. They do. A lot of them. They do. Because it is hard to come up with the source material. It's hard to get your audience involved. But the purpose, I think, has to be the center point of a show. Yeah, and I, I think our, our purpose has always been to be entertaining, non-PC, yep. shocking, if you will, like the old radio that we grew up on. 
And mm-hmm. now it's if you listen to some podcast, it's like, dude, you're monotone. What the hell? Yeah. You it, sometimes tell me I am, too. I don't try to be, but sometimes you tell me I am. Yeah, that, that right there shows you're in a rut and that you're not giving 100 percent. Well, I think the hardest thing nowadays is finding material because it's like, yeah, I know a lot of our, you know, little... five shows a week for, you know, four weeks out of the month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very hard to find it's 25 stuff. topics a month and I'm not complaining or anything. No, but it's not an easy task, you I, know, and then and then like, you know, for the news stories, I know there's been some of our people that are saying, oh, my God, why is it always about death? Well, because 90 percent of the stuff in the news is bad news. Well, that's where you have to start digging, you know, and it's like I've got only so many so many things that I go like specific things that I go through news sites that I go through that I guess I just need to expand my horizons on the news sites I use. So I pulled up this seven ways to find your purpose in life. Yep. That's what we're going to be discussing today. Yes. Cause I was sitting there like, damn man, I am bored. What the hell's the purpose of all this? And this came up out of my head. And I was, we were able to find an article on it mm-hmm. that we to discuss it about. But first, before we go, we're going to go into some news right here. Uh, Anthony Sanchez, China Dow, was executed for the 1996 killing of a University of Oklahoma dance student. And I guess he maintained his innocence in t- with his last words that he didn't do it. He actually said, I'm innocent. He said that as he was strapped to the gurney inside the death chamber, I didn't kill nobody. What's that say to you if he maintains all the way to the time they kill him? Do you think he might have been innocent? There's a possibility. There really is. I mean, did did they have DNA? Do we know? As far as it says... uh, the case for the 21-year-old Julie Buskin, an Arkansas native who had just completed her last semester when she was abducted from the parking lot of her Norman apartment complex, went unsolved for years until DNA from the crime scene matched Sanchez, who was serving time for burglary at the time. Yeah, but just because DNA at the crime scene, was, but the question is, was it on her person? It goes on to say Sanchez was convicted and sentenced to die in 2006 after DNA from sperm on Buskin's clothing at the crime scene was matched to him. Hmm. And he kept on saying that is fabricated DNA. That is false DNA. That is not my DNA. Can they fabricate it? Yeah. Can it have been planted? I don't know. Law enforcement can do whatever the hell they want, but this usually, is true. usually when you're facing death, you want to get everything off your chest before yeah, you, you go. usually want to go with a clear conscience. And he maintained right to the last minute he was innocent. I guess it's like a 50-50 on that, huh? And I guess the Supreme Court denied the motion for the attorney to keep going through some evidence that came up. That came up recently? Yeah. What? They just wanted to put somebody down for the crime. It sounds like it. Wouldn't it? Uh, okay, you got three more weeks to go through all the stuff. Yeah, how hard Couldn't is Couldn't even do weeks? that. If, I mean, if he was to, said he was being put to death, what, in 2006, you said? Mm-hmm. Well, it's 223 or 2023. Why not uh, give him three more weeks? Going back to this, that was 26 years, nine months, and one day ago is when uh, when she was killed. I can see the family wants, uh, you know. Closure. Yeah, they want closure, so you can't blame them. But you have to look at it. I don't see anybody going to the very last minute saying, I didn't do this. No, because you figure by the time they're getting strapped down, they're basically in tears apologizing for what they did. Right. Clear conscience going to meet the the man upstairs. Or even like within a day or two prior to it, he'd be. Now he was 44, 44 when he was put to death. And if it was, what was it? 26 years ago. Wouldn't that put him under the age of 18? Hold on a second here. (laughs) 
I don't math. I, I hate do you math. math. Do you do you do basic? He math? was 18 years old. 18 years old. When and, he and supposedly how do we, did this. How do we know that, you know, maybe they were in a relationship and they were doing their thing and somebody else didn't come do it after the fact. You know what? That, that's one thing a lot of people don't bring up is what you brought up. I mean, how you do you know, know that it was that? See, that's where the sexual assault really is tricky. Mm -hmm. When women bring it up like 10 years later or something, it makes it where nobody believes you. Definitely. So That's what, why it's if, like, what if somebody came in afterwards and like after he left, how do you know? Cause okay. So his, his sperm was found on her clothing. Well, was it found internally? Cause if it was found on her clothing, he could have just jerked off on his, on her clothes. Right. Like, whatever. But it's like, how, like for real, a lot of these situations, how do you know somebody doesn't come in after the fact? Like, what if somebody came to rob her after the fact? Or, and we already know what if there was more than one person? We already know law enforcement's uh, real famous for planting evidence on people that were innocent. I just don't know. This one's a it, tricky one. I just find it odd that he went, he, he just still claimed his innocence all the way up to being strapped on that bed. Hmm. I mean, that's not the norm. No, it ain't the norm, man. And he was 18 at the time he was uh, convicted. Uh, and he was 44 when he was put to death. There would have been some change, I think, in that time period. Definitely. What else we got going on here? Well, we've got Governor Ron DeSantis. Oh, Ron DeSantis. Yeah. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is in the spotlight after three billboards popped up in Chicago offering Illinois police officers $5,000 if they move to Florida for work. How much you want to bet you're going to get a lot of cops that move down there? Well, this comes on the heels of the Illinois Safety Act that set that is now set and taken effect which would include the end of cash bail for defendants, which started on Monday. So now you to go out, do some stupid shit, and you don't need to post bail. DeSantis, the Republican. Gotta love Illinois. He's a Republican president hopeful and is looking to take advantage of Illinois' controversial law and make the make the case that he's a law and order candidate. So basically, is it where somebody can go out there and kill somebody and they don't walk? They just don't have to post a bond. They they have the option, like, going in front of the judge, and the judge can choose to keep them or just let them go without having to make, pay money. And most of the time, the judge is going to say, see ya. Well, guess what? Since those billboards have gone up, 37 Illinois officers have moved to the state for work. Damn. Already? So, yep. When would those uh, boards go up? Uh, they went up. Uh, the beginning of the month, I believe. And already people are taking them up on it. Yep, because a lot of people aren't uh, big. They're not like really thrilled about these new this new safety act and these this no cash bail stuff. You get you, you get so tired of these progressive Democrats. It's funny. The San Francisco D.A. Now they're freaking uh, they're up to their necks in crime right now came out. And are now bitching about them being put up back on the streets, all these criminals. And it's like, dude, you reap what you sow, man. <laughs> what you think was going to happen? I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I think this whole ordeal is going to just go to hell in a handbasket more than it already has in the state of Illinois. But, you know, that's when you have to time question. Will tell. That's when you got to question China now. Why, is Why are it, we still here? We still here. I love this town. I can't help it. That's the reason. I don't like change. I've lived in Illinois for 50 years. And it can't go 10 minutes over the border. We'll see. <laughs> I got to find a house first. <laughs> things can change. Yeah, things can change when you got all the idiots running around and you're shooting at them. Yeah, I think that's what's going to have to start happening is regular civilians are going to have to pick up the arms and say, you know what? Not here. Well, that's just like, I guess I feel for Chicago. Yeah, that's going to go to hell. Chicago's going to get bad with this. 
really bad with this. It's going to be terrible. Because you got those, uh, you know, tree-hugging judges over at 26 and Kale. That's just going to release everybody. Well, I guess Rockford released a whole bunch of people. How many did they release? Uh, 27. My God. Yeah. 27 people got released in Rockford. Yeah, that's sick. It is sick. And you know what's even worse is the people that are making these laws, they got security where everybody else don't. Yeah. It's like they feel like they're more important than you. And you're the one who elects them, idiots. I know. It's like you really got to think about the bigger picture when it comes to this no cash bail or this new safety act law crap. And you got to sit there and you got to think about it. You know, they don't worry about themselves. They sure as hell don't worry about you because, like you said, they've got protection. Where I guess, you know, if you think about it, a lot of us here in Illinois, we all have protection, too. But we take it in our own hands, which could end us up in where those people are at. <laughs> I shoot one of them. I'm going to say, I want no cash bail. And be like, no. Nope. <laughs> all you got to do is say, I didn't intend to hurt him. Yeah, right. And I then didn't you could intend pro- to do it. I didn't intend to do it. It slipped. Idiots. And then you might be able to get away with it. Sometimes I just can't stand them people the way they think. It's just like New York. The governor came out and says, we can't take any more illegal immigrants. Well, I thought you were a sanctuary city, you assholes. Sharing is caring, and all these other states are willing to share with you. And they're sending them up. Keep on sending them up there. Keep sending them into Chicago. You get what you deserve. That's what I say. If you want to be that ignorant, you get what you deserve. And it's worse that everybody's the middle of the road, basically. And then you got your extreme parties. It's like, why you keep, uh, you know, going with them extreme idiots? I don't know. But this ain't going to end good here. No, it's not. And how much you want to believe? bet there's going to be a bunch of cops that start leaving. Oh, I can guarantee it. I wonder if that's going to happen around here. We'll have to find out. Yeah, right. For real. So in other news, which I know you hate when I say that, uh, Lakewood, Washington, two people are dead and one is in the hospital after a tire went through a van's window. The ins. The deadly incident happened Thursday around 5.30 a.m. You actually saw this happen. Yeah. Where a tire came off the car. That is deadly shit right there. Yeah, it went right in front of us on the bike. Yeah, that is deadly and, shit. And luckily, since you don't like to be in the vehicle's blind spots, we were like I never diagonal get a- behind the vehicle. So I when it went mean, off the mm-hmm. front end of the vehicle... It missed us. I'm either in front of a vehicle or in the back of it. You never I'm ride never next on the to side. Him. You never, never ride. Never. Never. Hell no. Only time you're ever stuck on the side is when traffic causes mm. that to happen. But on that day in question, luckily, we were able to be diagonal behind the vehicle, the minivan, where the tire went flying right in front of us on the bike. So the tire went through the windshield, split through the two front seats, and went directly through the last two through to the last three seat bench. Man, uh, investigators say eight people were in the van that was headed. How many somewhere. people died? Two people: a fifty-five year old and a twenty-two year old man died, and a third was injured. My God. Because this vehicle can't, the tire came flying off. You know, one thing people have to start realizing is when you change your tires, you got to have them torqued. And after about 50 to 100 miles, have them retorqued again. A lot of people don't do that. That's just it is because people don't give them the knowledge that after you get about 100 miles on your tires, you should go back to where you had them done or if you and did have them yourself them and you have to retorque them because if you don't, this is the kind of stuff that can happen. And even though we put it on with an impact, the impact's not going to keep that tire on. It's got to be torqued. Yep. And then it's got to be rechecked mm-hmm. or this is the kind of stuff that happens. And I think it's more prevalent than we know. We just are getting little bits and pieces of the story. Yeah. Not to mention that your tire falls off. Next thing you know, that car is going on, you know. Well, they say they say they have no idea where the tire came from. We don't know what type of vehicle it's from. They are investigating it currently. Then how the hell? What? 
Troopers said such in incidences are reminders of why it's always important to import important important. <laughs> important. Look at her coming up with new words. She did a Hollywoodism <laughs> to secure your load. So there is a high possibility. <laughs> there is a high possibility that this came off the, like it was in the back of somebody's truck. And came uh, flying. You know out. what I hate the most about pickup trucks is when you see a bunch of morons that stack it and they don't have it tied down. Next thing you know, you got mattresses flying on the road. Well, our son and I were actually driving to Janesville one time and there was uh some Hispanics in a pickup truck and they had a homemade <laughs> they had <laughs> I'm not gonna even crack <laughs> that joke. <laughs> They had a homemade. How many did they have in the back? <laughs> <laughs> they had a homemade trailer that was made out of cardboard, like not cardboard, but like plywood. Yeah. On the, that they were towing behind their truck, and they had these. I guess there was supposed to be a door on it, but the door was wide open on the back of it, the plywood door. And me and our son and I were watching, and we were not in the not directly behind them, but off to the other lane. And we're watching and he's watching all this stuff like start shaking like it's going to fall out of the back of the the trailer. The or trailer. Whatever. Next thing you know, it, a tire did come flying out the back of their trailer. Give me a break. And it missed us because I braked and it went in front of us and then started rolling down the like the side, bounced off the curb, went back into the center of the road and went flying down a hill right down the middle of the two lanes. And, and they didn't even stop. They didn't stop. They turned at the next light and kept going. Man, that's why you got to be careful, man. You never get behind somebody like that. Yeah. And it was like, what the hell just happened? So. And that can kill, man, when them tires get going. Well, and it's not just tires. I mean, people that are in pickups or whatever, or have trailers that they're trailing behind, you know, open trailers or whatever. Y'all need to make sure you secure your stuff down. Because if you don't, you're gonna you could possibly end up killing someone. You're damn right, man. So you got to make sure you strap it down. Yeah, strap, strap it down. down your load. Because <laughs> you know it can equal death, man. I'm telling you, it can. So, the sad stuff, man. Sad stuff. But right I mean, there. you know. With SRN News, I'm John Scott. Ukrainian President Zelensky's visit to Washington today comes at a key moment in his request for more U.S. assistance. President Biden is seeking an additional $24 billion in military and humanitarian aid for Ukraine. But approval of that request is in doubt because of a growing partisan divide in Congress. Some House Republicans want to cut U.S. assistance, and Speaker Kevin McCarthy prefers that Ukraine aid be debated as a standalone bill. White House correspondent Greg Cluxton. What do you think about that? What? $24 billion more is what they want. Isn't it getting stupid ridiculous? Why do we got to pay for it? Why do we got to supply them? It's because the globalists love the military machine. People are making a killing off of this stuff. Why we pay for it. Mm -hmm. You know, to those that say, well, we got to help them. Well, here's what I say. Give me $300 a month. What would you say to that? Giving me $300 a month. Why? Because that's what you're giving the government for them. Well, so why I not give it three, to me? I want $300 a month. Now, when you put it to that way, these people all of a sudden are like, no, nah, no, nah, I, I can't do that. I hate when people are uneducated, especially where their money goes. And I think it's because every year they get a tax refund. What's that? So they don't understand what it is to really pay taxes. Yeah, what's a tax refund? Well, you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Because we never get one. No, we got to pay. We pay every year. But those that don't have to, they don't understand what it feels like. Mm. And I sure they ain't the freaking rich boy, man. No. We live just like everybody else does. And they get their $5,000, their $6,000. And, you know, if they have, like, 12 kids, 
<laughs> they get a couple. They, they get like ten thousand. You know, a lot of people do that on purpose. I think they do. I think a lot of people have a lot of kids just so they have more to claim on their taxes, so they get more uh, earned income credit. And now and you're gonna have all these credit. tree huggers come out. Well, you know, you're just being, uh, uh, you're just being a racist. <laughs> And everybody always uses that term, and I swear people just use that term just to throw it out there because they don't even know what the word means. I don't but I'm think. glad you brought it up because I think that's what it, it's true. They're doing it out of spite. Mm -hmm. How else would you say that they're not doing it out of spite if they're getting these big tax refunds and next thing you know, they're getting all these food stamps each month? Yeah. How do you feel about that? I mean, the whole kind they're getting like what five, seven, a hundred dollars a month now for food stamps. Yeah, it ranges anywhere from three up to I think the most I seen somebody had on there because you know we take food stamps it was like twelve hundred dollars. I was like, Jesus. I would have flipped shit if I would have seen that. And I'm like, and you're buying monsters and stuff. Okay. So I how does that how you make you feel? Because some of your tax money's going for that. I, it actually pisses me off because. You know, food stamps and public assistance and all that is supposed to be for a short term period so you can get back on your feet again. It's not you're not supposed to live off of it the rest of your lives and people do it. But you have generations of people that just live like that. And it's sad. So you have because to ask yourself, taken what's away their from, purpose? It, yeah. What is their purpose? Because you're taking away from me working my butt off on a daily, you know, pulling anywhere from seven to 12 hour shifts and killing myself and you guys are taking that money and spending it stupid so what purpose would they have other than to to live off the government live off of others i don't think that would be a satisfying life. i personally feel that the government government needs to make changes to their policies as far as food stamps goes well the problem is they get these people that vote for them yeah, time so after want, time they don't want that time. ruined hell no I think there should be a time limit. I mean, I get it. They get a yearly review for food stamps, but you can't get can, you, you can can't lie. change yourself in a year. You can lie. But really, you can't change yourself in a year. I think in a year's time should be plenty of time for you to find a better job or do whatever you need to do to get a better job. It's plenty of time. But you would have people say, well, you're being mean. How do how do you take that? I'm not being mean. I'm not being mean. I think it's bad because you're living off other people. Other people are working their asses off just so you have food on your table. How is that fair to those of us that can't afford the food? Oh, my God. Food's got bad. You know, it's like I got I, I, I went to the grocery store, you know, yesterday and I got like 200 and something dollars in groceries and it's like four or five days worth of food. But it's like Jesus. You know, and, and not everybody's got that two hundred dollars to throw at a grocery bill. Mm. You know, has there been times when, yeah, I've had fifty bucks and I had to spread that real thin to get groceries for a couple of days? Is it feasible? Can you do it? Yeah, you can do it, but but then you got then you somebody got somebody that that's got twelve hundred twelve hundred dollars on their you know link card or whatever, and you're like, yeah, must be nice, and you're shopping here at a gas station. See, yeah, that's something I would have set out to them. Oh, it must be nice to have all my money on your card. Yeah. Enjoy your food. I paid for it. And then they'll come back and say, well, I deserve this. No, you don't fucking deserve it. Oh, sorry. Now I'm just getting angry. <laughs> you don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. But that's it. something they would come up and say. Well, that or it's owed, it's owed to me. No, it ain't. What are you doing? What are you doing? What, is, what was your purpose in life that you are now owed twelve hundred dollars a month in food stamps what'd you do what do you think about people that have kids mm. and that are on that you think they should have had the kids in the first place no uh, that's an that's a touchy situation how is it touchy because we had a hard time when we had our first yeah but we didn't depend on it no we didn't i mean i had medical assistance but that was pretty much about as far as it went we didn't qualify for anything else. We just but all these medical. others are on there for 
they're years. on it because yeah and i know a few people that are actually on food stamps and they've been getting it for years and and it, it does irritate me because you watch them leave the grocery store with like two carts full of groceries you or know. say, you know what, they go out, they have their fun, whatever the hell they do, they go on a vacation, next thing you know, they're using their food stamps for that, and it's like, what the fuck just happened here? Yeah, that's irritating as well, when you're when you're out on vacation and you're purchasing all your groceries on vacation with food stamps, it's like, you can afford to go on vacation, but you can't afford your groceries, I don't think you should have went on vacation. I, I agree. One thousand. You should have stayed home. I agree. One thousand. Because there's a reason behind having those food stamps, and it's not for you to take advantage of. It's for you to make sure you and your family are fed. Do you think many people take? Most people take advantage of it. I do. I really Ooh, do. China Dow throwing some steel today. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's just it's irritating knowing how hard I work. And, you know, how hard you sit here and you're working and you, you know, how hard you work and the fact a lot that, of people don't understand. I got the, another and, job, too. And, well, exactly. You not only do have to deal with all the stuff for the shows and stuff, but you work outside the house as well. So it's like you have two full time jobs. I have a full time job. You know, it's it, it's it's irritating knowing that. And those are the same people that get money back every year in taxes too and it's it ticks me off because it's like i know we bust our asses and we end up paying every year where those that are on food stamps get one hell of a big old refund and next thing you know it's gone within a week because they're buying stupid shit stupid unnecessary shit instead of getting what they need if you got kids you should be getting them clothing you should be getting them stuff for school. You should be getting or at them least saving your money or save it for a rainy day when you like have a disaster that happens in your house. Like if your fridge goes out or your washer or dryer busts out, then at least you got money to get something that you need. You shouldn't be spending all that shit on just all your wants. There are more needs than wants in this world. And that, that's exactly it. Wants wants i mean i get it because i make comments a lot to hollywood on how you know i i like i like to go get my nails done once a month i haven't done it yet i'm a little way behind on getting my nails done but you know for me i want to do that because i feel i need to do it because this one way that i spoil myself every month is by putting 40 50 bucks out for myself and doing something for myself and the just sitting there in the nail salon and listening to everybody talking and all the conversation and half of it you can't understand because it's oriental mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can kind of tell when they're talking about you and you think it's funny because you don't even care but it's just the relaxation and somebody's pampering you you know and it's like yeah when i get my nails done i feel good because i got them done but at the same time i feel bad because i know that 50 bucks could have bought you know a couple days worth of food but it's, you know. And then you see people going out there. Well, there's people using it. I hate that. There's people going out there and it's like, I, I, I know, I know a female that she spends like over $200 a month just on getting her hair done. And then she spends another hundred on getting her nails and her, you know. And let me guess, she's one of them on the food stamps. And she's on the food stamps and she is one of the ones that gets like 1200 a month. She's got three kids and she takes full advantage of the system her and her boyfriend purposely have not gotten married because with her being single even though they've been together for years and all three kids are his they purposely didn't get married so this way when they she don't files, lose it they don't lose this they don't lose the food stamp and when she files, what does that say when to, she uh, files taxes she can file head of household and claim all three kids and get a hell of a big tax so basically back. her purpose in life is just uh live off the everybody system. else live off the system well people say live off the system where it really is us well yeah technically it's living off of those people that are out there busting their ass day in and day out because I never really thought about it until I started actually, you know, listening to what we've been talking about on a lot of our shows. And actually and, looking at and it. And then I actually would, you know, look at my paycheck stub and be like, Jesus Christ. 
Because before you only thought it, well, that's taxes, whatever. That's yeah, I would I would just look at my what's going being deposited because I've always had direct deposits. So I've always looked at just the, the part that's open in the envelope because we get them in the envelopes at work. And I just look and be like, oh, that's what's going in my account on Friday. I wouldn't even open the whole entire thing to look at it. I would just look at what's going in my account, file it in my file in my file folder and just like not even think twice about it. Now I look at it every time, every time I and get that's it. That's what pisses you off. And I see how much they take out for Social Security and how much and then God forbid Social Security is not there when I get there, you know, and it's like, what the hell, you know? You try and think about your future and you don't know what kind of purpose you have if there is no future and how you're going to survive. We're going to talk about that in a second. The personalities on this radio show are going to take a quick break. They're going to get a cup of coffee, call mommy and ask for gas money, and they'll be right back. You're listening to Motorcycle Madhouse Radio, WMMRDB Rockford. Yeah, we're talking about the seven ways to find your purpose in life. And uh, China Dow was just making a great point right there. What were you making? Well, when you look at your statement, you know, you're from your paycheck stub, and you see everything that comes out in your taxes which I never really paid much attention to, but now I pay attention to it every two weeks when I get paid. Do you think them type of people are a waste of space? To be honest, they're a waste of space. No, I just think they're ignorant. What's the difference? I don't ever, I don't ever, waste I don't, space. I don't really consider anybody a waste of space because there's a purpose for a reason. There's a purpose and a reason for everybody to be in this world. But what can you say their purpose is other than living off of somebody else? That they're ignorant and they don't that a lot of people might not know any other way because they've seen their parents do the same thing. Yeah, generational type of stuff. But I just think it's a lot of it's ignorance. And those um, are the same people that won't pay their bills. Yeah, they also don't pay their and bills. And then they cry wolf that they got no money. Mm -hmm. But then you go out and you see them purchasing all this kind of shit. Shit that's unnecessary. And then it's like, damn, man, what are you doing here with food stamps? I thought you, you know, or what are you doing going here or going there? Yeah. How'd you, how'd you afford that? When you have no when money. You have, when you're just bitching yesterday, how you had no money. Now all of a sudden you're, you're, you're buying a hundred dollar item. And you just said the day before you had no money. Mm -hmm. So how'd you afford that? It's unbelievable. I can't live that kind of existence. I can't. No. And I think that's just it is people need to realize. Uh, they that, ain't even in, in, uh, ashamed for doing it. Mm -mm. No, I think a lot of people just they think it's funny. And it ain't funny. It's just like people come hopping into the gas station and they're all. Do you guys take food stamps? <laughs> and they say it out loud. Oh, yeah. They don't. They don't. We've got very few. I think I think in the the. Five and a half years, almost six years I've been there. I've had one, like maybe a handful of people that come up to the counter and they'll be like, excuse me, do you guys take food stamps here? Everybody else is like. But everybody just comes in the door and like, you guys take food stamps? Oh, you do? You do? Okay. I'd be embarrassed. And then they're heading over to the donut counter and buying like 12 donuts. How does the other customers react when they, they all look? That? Everybody looks. <laughs> they're just like, I'm like. I'm like, now watch this. And you'll see everybody just look at that one person because they're being going all, to the donut aisle. They go straight to the donuts or head straight to the monsters. They don't get anything that's, you know, of bare necessity. I mean, hey, we got, haven't you heard any? We carry from we people? carry eggs. We carry milk. We carry, you know, bread. You know, we don't have everything, but we carry a lot of the stuff. We've got canned goods. Why are they not heading to that aisle instead of heading straight to the 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 donut rack where we just got our do donuts delivered from the bakery? They're mm -hmm. heading over there or they're heading over to the monsters and the Red Bulls and getting all that. Crap. I bet that pisses everybody else that watches. Well, people that are usually behind those that are purchasing stuff with the food stamp card. They usually nine times out of 10 will make a comment when it's their turn at the register and be like, I can't believe they just bought that on food stamps. I hope they're happy with what they purchased because, you know, we all just paid for that. 
and I bet if they overhear it, they'll turn around and say, well, you know what? I'm owed this. It's mine. Mm -hmm. They would. That. They would. That. That's ignorant. You're right. They would. It's it's all ignorance, in my opinion, because, you know, we've had rough times. I went a long time without having medical insurance because we couldn't afford it. And we were able to get that taken care of. And now I have medical insurance. And it's like, you know what? If you can't afford it, you end up going without. And that's with everything, not just something like medical insurance. I mean, it's if you can't afford, you, you know, your cell phone, you, you just go without. You can't afford the Internet. Guess what? You're going without. Yeah, those are the ones that get those thousand dollar Apple iPhones and shit. And then they can't afford to pay for it. But it's like, oh, it, my phone's off again. You know, well, pay why? your fucking bill, pay your dude. bill, stupid. If you can't afford your cell phone, don't use it. If you can't afford because you had to get the most expensive phone and you got a monthly payment on that phone plus your phone bill because you didn't pay for that phone outright when you got it, go to Walmart and buy a phone outright and, and then you'll have a cheaper bill. I always found that. <laughs> I actually found it funny when people would say, well, my phone's off. Uh, I got to wait till I get paid. Dude, how are you even with your money, man? Really? How do you control your I mean, money? I ain't going to lie. I made sure my phone bill's paid every month because why? It's the only contact that we have with our kid. Our daughter is through our phone. Right. So it's like I have to have my phone available. I don't care about it for other reasons. I could. I mean, I went all weekend when we went to Tomahawk. I didn't do I didn't do any TikToks. I didn't do anything because I had no signal. So it's like I can go without if I had to, but we don't feel sorry for you if you your no. your phone your phone on. your phone gets shut off. That's your own fault. Seven ways to find your purpose in life. Now let's try to uh, tell these leeches how to find some purpose. All right. Well, the first things is to identify the things that you care about. Purpose is all about about applying your skills toward country. I can't talk. A Hollywoodism. Purpose is all about applying your skills towards contributing to the contributing. There it is. I can't say it today. What is wrong? To the greater good in a way that matters to you. So identifying what you care about is an important first step. Well, besides family and stuff, I like everything, you know, that has an engine to it. And that's what I do on this, you know, at my other job. Well, I think people that are. So I contribute to people. There. I think I think people need to think about this that are living off, you know, our tax dollars. And what are you good at? What have you done that gave you a skill that you can use for a cause? What do you care about in your community? Basically, they want well, you to think, think about the greater good, what you can do to help as far as and they don't mean financially that is not what no it's what they can do is help themselves by getting a damn job and, and that's what it's going for i mean you got to sit there and you got to think about and trust me i've thought about it numerous times myself because i don't I mean i don't want to live working at a gas station but i do it to myself and you can even ask hollywood i said it last night i'm like hey i'm a licensed hairdresser which there's no money in that out in this area that works at a damn gas station. He's like, you ran an auto shop. You ran a tattoo shop. I'm like, I know, but there and, ain't no. And I always there. say, but, you know, it's like you, you basically you have the skills. You basically have to when it talks about you got to believe in yourself, identifying the things you care about. You also got to think about yourself and what you feel that you are worth. And you got to think that you're worth more than what you really are. That's just like me during negotiations for jobs or any of that stuff. I know what I'm going in there for. And that's what you're paying me. If not, go fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. Most people ain't like that. And that's a sad state of affairs right there. Yeah. But that is one of the biggest. I think number one, you got to find purpose as far as what you can contribute to. Definitely. I mean, if you're good with your hands, then obviously you're going to want to find something that maybe is in the mechanics or automotive or building something like construction or something of that, you know, of that nature. 
I mean, I'm good with my hands, but in a different way. I mean, I cut hair for behind the chair for over 25 years. And you're awesome at it. But Which, you know, to this you know day, what? You I may always, not be in a salon, but I'm still good at what I do. I just choose not to do it. And you were always scared to have your own. I always was, and I still am. And it could have turned into yeah, a It probably could have turned into something huge, but I didn't do that. I didn't go that route. But that's okay. Will I regret it? Maybe, but just not right now. I don't have regrets yet. Not yet? Not yet. Give me time. And I bet the ones that live off of us don't have any damn regrets either. Probably not. The second thing is you need to reflect on what matters most. Sometimes it can be hard to single out one or two things that matter most to you because of your circle of care and concern is far well, ranging. You got to say family and your freaking happiness. Mm -hmm. That's the two most important, I think. Well, definitely. But if you know, if one of the things that you like to do and you like to prior prioritize your values She's and be useful for finding today. purpose, you know, that's the other thing is you got to know what your values are in life. You got to realize, you know, what values help in finding purpose to what you want to do. Do you think a lot of the people that live off of us don't have value? I don't think they have any values. I don't think they have any cares in this world except for themselves. And again, if they need it, they need it. But after some point in time, we are we are definitely not knocking people that need it. We're talking about people that take advantage of it. There is a major difference. What would that difference be? A lot of people that need it, it's for a they do it only for a temporary basis till they find something better for them to do as far as work. I just can't see, you know, well, Taking your, bene of your benefits are $1,200 a month. I couldn't see just living on that. No. On purpose, because that's basically what it is. Well, and if you think about it, they may be getting $1,200 a month, but how the hell are you paying the rest of your bills? Very true. You still got to work to pay and the rest And you can't of those go out bills. there and cry wolf because uh, you can't pay your bills. Nope. Well, if you don't want to go out there and work and make your money, why is it everybody else's fault then? It's not. It's your own. It's always, it, you can't sit there and keep placing blame when you can't survive and you can't pay your own bills. It's the only person's fault it is, is your own. You can't blame family. You can't blame your friends. It is your own fault. And I guess I got to be mean because I've known people that cry woof so much about not having money. And you just turn around and look at it. It's like, dude, or dude s whatever. You bring it on your fucking self. Yeah. There's at some point in your life, you got to get your priorities straight. And that's just it. In order to have a purpose in life, your priorities need to be in line. And a lot of people can't get priorities straight. Nope. Because a lot of people's priorities are just to go out and party and have everything they want and not worry about the things they need in life. And that's what it really comes down to. People just want to do. They want, want, want. Wow. Trying it out. Hidden it today, man. People do. They just want, 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 want. Well, guess what? How bad do you want that? You want it so bad that you're going to lower yourself to not worry about making sure your lights are on anymore because you want that thing so bad. I always said there was three top priorities. Make sure your house is paid. Make sure your electric bills paid, your heat and all that stuff, and make sure you have food. You better take care of them three things first. Well, I mean, if you, got, if you got a car note, you know, you got that responsibility as well. Yeah, but pay your car note. But you got to pay your car note. So, I mean, it's that's not the gonna, finance company's fault. If that's going to definitely be in your priority list. I know in, uh, my priority list is making sure that I got my phone on all the time. Uh, I know we also depend on the Internet because without the Internet, we wouldn't be here. While you guys wouldn't be here watching us right now. Right. You know, so you got to make sure all your bills are paid before you get those things that you want in this world. And most people will skip out on their bills in order to get, well, they wanna, I want this. Yeah, I have to have it. I have to. It's either I want it or I have to. How bad is that have to? What are you not paying because you have to have that? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to come back and blame the person that you owe the money to. You're going to blame them for having to pay it. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, your light bill is 200 bucks. You better pay your light bill or next thing you know, you're going to get late fees and another month added. So now you owe 400 
and it's not their fault that you owe that money. Nope. And I don't know how all states do it. I know Illinois, some of the electric companies, not all of them, they will let you do one deferment, which means they take, let's say you owe $400 and they'll spread that out for a, a specific time period for you to pay along with your current bill. But they only do it once. And sometimes I really wonder how people do because they let their finances get so fucked up where they got to put it in other people's names or yep. they got to pay security deposits. And keep in mind, it, for those of you that have brain cells, <laughs> don't ever let anybody put shit in your name. Oh, hell no. Whether it's electric bill, a vehicle, a credit card, I don't care what it is. Don't ever let anybody put something in your name. You're going to get fucked. Because guess what? They're going to max it out. They're going to use it to their advantage, and then they ain't going to pay it, and then they're going to come after you. And they're going to blame you for it happening. They're going to be like, well, because of you, my car got taken. Dude, they, yeah. you didn't pay the bill. You didn't pay the bill. I just co-signed so you could get the vehicle. I don't want the responsibility, but guess what? Because they didn't pay the bill. That car's getting repoed. Now it's your problem. No, theirs. really, it ain't, you know. You're you're correct. It is your problem because of what they did. Because of what the person did by having you as I a could never. I could never. Uh, we Dude, won't even do it we for don't, our kids. Hell no. Our daughter bought her car on her own name. We won't even do it. Nope. Interested in getting laid? Need to take your manhood back from your woman? Join Hollywood Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time on Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem and take lessons in getting your balls back. You won't be disappointed. How many people you think are really pissed at us right now? Oh, probably more than half. <laughs> do you think that's one of these deals where you're <laughs> sitting in church and you hear the preacher talking and you think it's about you? Oh, definitely. When it's really not about anybody specific, it's just in general. Yeah. That's what's happening right now, I guarantee you, oh, on yeah. the podcast platform. Oh, I bet you. They're, they're, we're going to have people hating on us right now. Oh, well. I mean, hey. Is I, it because they can't take the truth of the matter? If you can't take the heat, get out the kitchen. And that's what I always never understood about them type of people is getting pissed at somebody else. I mean, we're not pointing fingers at anybody. We're just saying this in general. So if you feel it's about you, you must have a guilty conscience about something. Oh, you're de you know what? You said it perfect there. If you're feeling that way just by what we're talking about, maybe you need to get your priorities straight. Maybe you need to step back and take a look at yourself in the mirror and decide where you're going wrong. Maybe grow up. Grow up, get some balls, whatever. No, not get some balls, but get you know, get your priorities. Get straight. your priorities and get your shit together, and realize that most people's lives just aren't based on themselves. Most people have families or kids, mm -hmm. and those come way before you. Big time. My kids, man, I, I would do anything to protect my kids and make sure my kids have food. I don't care, and I'm I, not going to give you twenty anything. bucks. And so, yeah. <laughs> See, with me, I do not borrow money. Well, that's just like. Uh, do we? Do we ever borrow money to anybody? No. Because <laughs> uh -uh. I know I'm going to have to chase it or I'm going to, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm not getting it back. So why am I going to borrow it to you? No, it won't happen. You need something. I'll take you to buy it. Well, it's not even that. I'm talking about people that come up. Well, you know, I got to pay my electric bill. Can I borrow this? Well, why didn't you pay it in the first place? Why didn't instead you pay it getting, when the bill came? Instead of going out there and buying that Xbox game. Yeah. It ain't my responsibility. Nope. A lot of people think I'm, you know, pretty hard nosed, and I am. Because why am I going to put myself That's out for you? because my, my purpose in life is to take care of myself and my family, not other people's families. That ain't our job. It's not my job. That's just like when uh, our son and I were coming home from the grocery store yesterday. We seen this uh, woman standing in the middle of the median in the middle, right by a turning lane. And we happened to be in that turning lane. So I rolled my window up because she's holding a sign saying that she's a refugee with two kids and she's pregnant. And I looked at our son and I'm like, she's probably bullshitting. Well, if you're a refugee, why ain't you at the government house? 
then why are you out there begging for money? And I'm sorry to say, but I noticed that the purse that she had wrapped over her shoulder was a $60 handbag. So, And then she's probably wearing a $100 pair of freaking shoes. She was wearing a brand new pair of Crocs <laughs> with a $60 handbag. And the dress that she was wearing looked brand spanking new. And I'm sorry, but she said she was pregnant. You know, I'm probably going to get so much hate for this. She said she was pregnant, but if I was as big as she was when I was big, like she was showing and, and saying she's pregnant, I couldn't walk without holding my belly from underneath. So she wasn't starving and she wasn't walking around like she was extreme, you know, like most women. I would guess when they're pregnant. I guess we are kind of hard nose on this because we do have a purpose. And when you let other people screw up your mojo. Mm hmm you're going to lose your purpose on what you want to achieve. Yeah. And it was funny because it's like, you could, I could see the two cars that were behind me in my rear view mirror. And all three of us rolled up, the had window. our hands like out our windows. Like I was smoking the car behind me. The guy was having a cigarette and I could see the person behind that had his hand out the window. And all of a sudden you seen everybody's hands slowly go in their cars and put their windows up. Because at some point, you just got to say, you know what? <laughs> Do it on your own. And even our son sat there saying, why doesn't she just get a job? And if she's that pregnant, why isn't her husband out here? Well, that or there's a time when you just keep enabling somebody. If you keep on falling for their bullshit, all you're doing is enabling them. Well, and if she, she, I mean, she literally was standing there from the time we went to the store and she was still there when we came back and we were in the store for at least an hour and a half because of how much we needed to get. But she, for her to be there for that whole hour and a half, and I know she was there before, <coughs> I mean, God only knows how much she had in that $60 handbag. So there you go, everybody. Make sure you find some purpose, man. Uh, if you want to help the show, you can there, uh, be a cash app at dollar sign motorcycle madhouse. It really does help uh, the show out. Everybody have a good weekend. Let us know in the comment section what you all think. Rock on. I say goodbye. Vamos. Adios. Ciao. So long. Get your hat jacked. Number one internet biker radio show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly